Bright Cellars is a monthly wine club that matches you with wine that you'll love. A fresh start to 2022 is the perfect time to become more knowledgeable about which wines you enjoy the most. Start your discovery by taking the Bright Cellars quiz and answer unique questions about your favorite chocolate and how you drink your tea. Through learning more about you, Bright Cellars will find the perfect wine to suit your taste buds by creating a personalized taste profile, which improves over time as you rate more wines. The best part? Your wine arrives at your door each month, eliminating the need to venture out to the grocery store or liquor store to waste money on bottles that might not even match your taste. And every wine comes with a delight guarantee, meaning if you ever dislike one of the wines, Bright Cellars will replace it with a new bottle in your next box. Personally, I get a little nervous trying new flavors of wine. Usually I try a wine based on a friend telling me about something they enjoy. And one of the main reasons I like Bright Cellars is that I get to take their word for it, just like a friend. Right now, Bright Cellars is giving Sins fans 60% off their first four bottle box. That's just $38 for four bottles. This value is almost sinful. Sponsors like Bright Cellars help us continue producing new Sins content each week. So support them by going to brightcellars.com slash cinemasins to take the quiz and get started today. The modern Columbia logo was based on a worker named Jenny Joseph, who posed for it in 1992. She appears on every Columbia picture and does not receive any kind of residuals. I just mention it since this logo isn't long enough to sin and I had to find something. Cause Sin's guy got a Sin logos, y'all. Opening an Adam Sandler movie while filming on a location vacation. Cliche. It was unbelievable. As unbelievable as this perfectly even spray on tan? He took me to all these cool local places. This scene reminds me of an infuriating recent dental visit when the assistant would not stop talking to me while I had to lay there trapped. I would pay double to attend a dental facility that has a zero chatty chat policy. And while I'm at it, that goes for haircuts too. Just cut my hair. I don't want to tell you what's been going on in my life since the last time you cut my hair, River. Focus. Make sure it looks even and sh** and let me go home. Well, we got a little drunk. Well, at least we know that Henry is an ageist, just sexist. <laughs> so I can do a human body while talking on the phone about your sex life. Henry Roth. Why didn't you tell me you were a secret agent? This movie not only sets up the age-old guys or dogs who lie to women to get them into bed trope, but enforces the more subtle women are dumb enough to believe them and then will get clingy trope. Trope for everyone! Did you know that some studies reveal that dolphins actually show more intelligence than most Happy Madison movies? You see what happens when you play with sharks? I refuse to image search wound patterns for shark attacks in order to confirm my suspicion that this perfectly clean arc-shaped laceration is not how a shark bite would appear on a body. I'm just gonna send this not a shark bite anyway, because I can. Keep the heel on a boy boy. All of you. Huh? Oh, he just cast a spell on us. This movie was made within the last 20 years. Why stack two unused boxes of Aquafresh toothpaste on the top shelf and have a filled toothpaste container upright on the lower shelf? This is a man who eats candy for breakfast. Do you think he overprepares for dental hygiene? This is also a man who f***s for sport. How is his precious storage space used for extra toothpaste and not medicinal creams to soothe his recurring genital rashes? Okay, so the movie doesn't tell us he has an STD, but do the math. It's a statistical probability. You get some boobies, some assy, a pull on your boy boy, come on. This movie made almost $200 million at the box office. Penguin ass on your map. I'm just saying, don't blame me if some undiscovered islands show up next time you try to navigate. This foot mark is not on the pillow in the next shot. Alexa, what are you doing? I meant check the thermometer. Arguing with your Amazon Alexa. That's a little warm. Go to the bottom of the barrel, please. Oh, f*** you, movie. I know you want to establish Sandler as some sort of veterinarian god, but there's no way he could tell the minute difference in temperature between the fish at the top or bottom of the barrel. Or that it would even really matter. Finding the right fish would be as easy as shooting... I know there's a saying that would work here. Frogs in a bucket? Also, strangely enough, go to the bottom of the barrel was the mantra for writing the jokes in this film. You needed the fish slap to calm down. If it's not enough to highlight that the lead in this movie is a womanizer, let's also be sure to showcase that women who look masculine are props for deprecating comic relief. I'm gonna try to get him breathing manually, okay? So I need your face right next to his mouth. Gee, I wonder where this could be headed. At least it will happen quickly, and we won't have to play with this false tension for two- Dear God, can we just get to the wall was puking already? That's what she gets for eating my roast beef sandwich! <laughs> Taking a roast beef sandwich to work. But also, if we're looking to redeem this character, I probably wouldn't have started with conspires with marine life to projectile vomit on a co-worker over a lunch dispute. At this rate, he'll have to save a baby from drowning while simultaneously solving the climate crisis and ending world hunger to be fully redeemed. Sailboats! Quit wasting the wind. Nature is meant to be preserved. Save the planet and use fossil fuels like the rest of us. Captain's Log, November 5th, 6.45 a.m. This counts Star trek -eration. And honestly, how dare you, Adam? How dare you? I get you spam and eggs. Will Henry have to pay for that breakfast you were forcefully ordering for him? Does he have no say? When does this ever happen in a restaurant? Want for me to put peanut butter cups in your eggs? 
No, that's okay. It's an actual conversation in this movie. It was then that the penis-centered hero of our story spotted his next mark. She happens to be smart enough to see through his bullshit, but is also brain damaged and can't remember his triggery. This, friends, is the central part of the plot that holds this movie together. How scalding must the coffee have been in order to mix with syrup and 40 seconds later maintain a steam stream? Too hot to drink, that's the answer. Also, playing with your food. Crafting a waffle volcano is all fun and games until the coffee lava erupts and causes third-degree burns on little Timmy's pitching hand and ruins his chance at supporting his family through Major League Baseball. His mom will now die at 50 because they didn't have enough for her crucial clavicle operation and all because you thought it would be fun to play food geologist instead of just eating your damn breakfast. Happy now? Why would a restaurant garnish a plate of waffles with orange and parsley? You're just making a decision to throw it away later when you bust the table. I really didn't expect to send garnish twice, but I can't ignore Lucy's decision to discard her garnish onto the table and then return the garnish to her plate. Now the discarded garnish is touching her food! Gah! There's a little fella. A strange thing to say when the image on the laptop has been on the little fella during their entirely useless conversation. That cheated on you with whole wrestling team. <laughs> Close. Actually, it was my college girlfriend, Tracy. College girlfriends. Also, phew. Without this microscopic glimpse into his past, I would have gone the rest of the movie so confused as to why he somehow justified in all his ass baggery. <laughs> Cracking your cervical spine like this. Checking your waffle's prostate in public. Why don't you try this? Inventing the Waffle House. Also, Henry touches Lucy's waffle with his bare fingers, and somehow this works, even though it does not work later. This possessive handshake. I just hold on to them for five minutes each. Minutes? Touching anyone for more than five seconds is a sin. I don't care if they're family. I think tattoo face. <laughs> I don't even have to play you the full joke for you to know whatever this punchline referred to could never have been funny enough for that reaction. Also, do you want tiny shards of metal in your spam? Because this is how you get tiny shards of metal in your spam. This restaurant cove is beautifully located, all tucked in away from the open sea. Which of course is nothing like what we were shown earlier when Henry had to abandon his boat to find this quaint spot in the first place. <laughs> That is the stupidest looking swing I've ever seen. Thinking that referencing Happy Gilmore will make this movie any better. My life sucks. Says a man with several talented children, an ability to surf, time enough to meet people in bars, and golf leisurely. Give her the white kikiki sneaky between the cheeky. This movie has a 6.8 rating on IMDb. Ula needs it. This way I can imagine I did it, and then I can get through another weekend. Living your sex addiction vicariously through another person. This is a dream sequence, and just think about the symbolism of descending a cliff to retrieve your balls. Just think about it. Really think about it. Henry dreams of Lucy, complete with a lily flower in her hair, and this is before he knows she loves lilies. Are you getting drunk? Are you eating a flower? What are you thinking? I'm thinking that Tusk drinking out of two huge straws is a really bad idea. Not only because it is not sexy, but you also have to battle the liquid from coming back out of your mouth between the two tubes where the suction is broken. Am, am I wrong? Actually, I'm not drunk at all, Noreen, and neither are you, because there's no alcohol in these drinks. How is Galaxy Quest here surprised at this? And how does this get them fake drunk plan even work? And most importantly, how am I supposed to care about this asshole? That guy over there could help you out. So I guess Alexa's just hanging out on the off chance that there are sex scraps at the bar? Or is the movie just gonna use her as a throwaway cheap laugh prop when they're not sure how to end a scene on writing merit alone? Don't move, I have to talk to you. But conveniently, I have to go do something first so that you and the audience can figure out the big reveal for yourself as awkwardly as possible. Lucy was in a terrible car accident. Don't worry, if you space out during this explanation as to why Lucy has brain damage, the movie will repeat it another 703 times. That's a different part of the brain. And if you get confused about how the brain injury part works, several characters will also explain how this works 703 times. She just can't retain any new information. It's like her slate gets wiped clean every night while she sleeps. It's like Memento meets Groundhog Day, but with lots of genital humor was probably the elevator pitch for this movie. She reads the newspaper, though. It's a special paper her father puts on their porch every night. He got hundreds of them printed out. Printed hundreds of the same paper to gaslight his sick daughter into believing the delusions of her disorder are real? Dads, am I right? The lady at the farmer's market gave it to me as a birthday present. I think she likes you. I think that pineapple was taken out of the deep freeze last night and should be f***ing cold right now and Lucy would notice. Especially if she cuts it open for her cake and finds pineapple ice crystals. Try not to sweat in the sauce. But dirty shoes on the counter are just fine. They score here, they bring it to 14 to 10. Well, maybe they'll win for your birthday, Dad. Well, it appears they're playing the Lions, so I don't have to have lived through the day before to know they'll win. In Detroit, they just call that Sunday. So the sin, as always, is the Lions. But also, doesn't she know that NFL games wouldn't be on at night in Hawaii? The games start at 7 in the morning there, and even the late games are on in the early afternoon. Happy birthday, dear Dad! 
Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. You'd think after singing this song 365 times that Doug would have learned how to sing in key with his sister, but nope. The sixth sense. The twist is you get to the end of this movie and find out it was dumb the entire time. Sorry for the spoilers. I can't believe it. Bruce Willis is a ghost. I'm just, I'm shocked. If you didn't know the twist to Sixth Sense until five years later when you saw it on VHS, I don't know whether to congratulate you or feel sorry for you. So I'll just go with I don't believe you. Why waste the cake? Just tell Lucy you want something smaller to celebrate your birthday of lies. She'll get over it and then you don't have to buy the ingredients for a cake that is wasted every night. How have they gone an entire year without colors fading in the wash or the fabric wearing down? Is this movie saying that Purex takes out all stains and maintains the perfect pink? And for a few days every month or so, she's probably having a surprise stain on those white pants that Purex miraculously takes care of as well. I'm saying the product placement is woefully overlooked. If the idea here is that Lucy would notice a few millimeters of soap missing from the container, wouldn't she also notice her hair growing? Or do they snip her hair while she sleeps? Come to think of it, and I don't want to get too personal here, but if Lucy went to bed shaved clean, is she waking up clean shaven again? Or do we just skip over the mental confusion of Pylos, Pitts, and Instabush? Of all the stupid stupidity in this Erase the Day montage, nothing is stupider than painting over a new painting each day. You'd have to prime and paint the wall every single day so that sh** didn't show through. So that means there are at least three coats of paint added to that wall daily. Do you know how quickly those walls would be caked in inches and inches of smelly old paint? That room is going to shrink faster than a Death Star trash compactor. And smell just as bad. Also, these holes should not exist unless they also drill them out so it doesn't fill with hundreds of coats of paint over time. They are dedicated and dumb. I appreciate your interest, Oprah, but leave me alone. Funny, the plants must be screaming the same thing at him because they are living on a fucking boat. I think my stitches opened up again, cuz. Stitches? Sir, apparently enough time has passed for your wound to become a scar. You got a cat? Cuz I feel something leaking me. Trying to have sex with pets around. Let's add this book to the growing list of things that would be aging without explanation. Lucy reads the same pages every day, and if she can notice soap squirts missing from a container, she would notice microscopic wear and tear on delicate book pages. I bet you 20 bucks I can get her to have breakfast with me again. Says the guy who literally said after being asked why he wouldn't date a woman with a brain injury that... It's evil. Two minutes ago in the previous scene. Do they think because the movie is about short-term memory loss that the audience has it too? You realize how long a gumball will have been sitting in this closed-in machine for for it to get to you. Whose idea was it to be like, let's put something in the glass enclosure that's never cleaned for months and then all the people pay a quarter to use greasy gears to turn and deliver it to them so they can insert it into their mouths. We'll be rich. <laughs> Spraying water near an exposed electrical outlet. <laughs> This cringe is on for some time. Also, this f***ing works. Why would this total stranger make the universal sign of turning butter right in the middle of their breakfast? Look at how these idiots are transporting their spam canisters. It's not in a box, it's stacked for maximum display. My God, does this movie want to make people fall in love with spam? It's like they thought that we would immediately forget how much people in Hawaii love spam between scenes. I thought, hey, this guy is so desperate to meet me. He might be worth talking to. Tell me a dude wrote your movie without directly telling me a dude wrote your movie. Any guy who's okay with that ain't okay with me. And also a man who gave chase to his daughter and followed her home in his truck like a goddamn stalker isn't okay with you either, right? He asked me not to go to the hooky lounge. I'm not going to the hooky lounge. Not doing anything wrong. No, he specifically said, Stay away from my daughter. Mr. Boner-induced selective hearing guy. Holy sh**. Where did he get all these blockades and such? Do they have a quick and easy road construction supply store in town? Oh my eye! Ooh, that survives this. There's something I want to show you. You better come take a look at this cliche. Excuse me, can I borrow this? Look, October... What? I'm glad the movie is finally addressing it. But this would literally happen all the time if this were real. Unless they keep her trapped at home, the amount of unsuspecting strangers or environments with clues would be unavoidable. Just one more reason this coddle and enablist plan not only is unethical, but would never work. Is there anything more depressing than seeing a folder that you assume would be filled with cards from your students, but upon flipping open is as empty as your memories of yesterday? I can feel it. But only now, after I've been told, not every single day when I wash my hair and wonder, huh, where'd that giant bump come from? Ah, oh, well, off to build some waffle-based architecture. Do we have sex? Wow, for a dad who caused his daughter's brain injury by taking his eyes off the road, he sure likes to avoid keeping his eyes on the road. So you guys have to just lie to me every day. No, they choose to lie about you every day. But sure, let's have a moment to make this about them. Gah. I suck at this job. Nah, you're fine, made-up idiot in a movie guy. 
The real people who suck at their jobs are the writers who thought this scene was funny or needed. I think you should meet 10 Second Tom. We call him that because we're a professional medical institution that of course gives nicknames to our patients based on their disability. Hope that doesn't offend you, Lucy Luzaday. I was in an accident? That's terrible. Don't worry, you'll totally get over it in about three seconds. But if Tom's memory resets every 10 seconds from the accident, why is he just repeatedly introducing himself to people instead of every 10 seconds screaming, WATCH OUT FOR THE- Wait, why am I in a hospital and suddenly wearing a name tag? I don't go just because my son is psychotic. Mocking your child's speech impediment. Starting your So You're an Amnesic orientation video with hurricanes and civil unrest. My name is Lucy. Is, is he wearing her shirt? Or did they manage to find a pink replica last night at a random store in the area? And if it is Lucy's shirt, does that mean that Henry came back to the house to watch it? So Lucy was wearing a clean one this morning? Or is she wearing the same shirt that Ula wore while creating the video last night? This matters to me. Oh, come on, stop with the licking, you're making me <laughs> sick. I'll just point out that Henry chose to keep this in the final edit of his videotape. Anyways, I know you wish I was making all this stuff up. Nope. Everyone is wishing there was an explanation as to how a small child is getting a camera angle that is now eye level with a full grown walking adult. <laughs> this movie was called The Last Good True Adam Sandler Movie by a popular website in 2020. Every day you help her to realize what happened and you wait patiently for her to be okay with it. Then you get her to fall in love with you again. Underused Maya Rudolph is right. How does this work on a day-to-day -day basis? Does he not have to go to the aquatic center job anymore? How do Marlon and Nemo, sorry, Doug take the time they need to fish? Or at a bodybuilding contest? Is there some sort of settlement that gives all these people the ability to just drop everything in their life to make Lucy's perfect day a reality? <laughs> Making out when there are sharks around. What does it imply that Ula is even here? Was he stalking them, or was he just hanging out with the dolphins late at night and noticed they were here? And honestly, why was he swimming with the dolphins at night when no one is around? Never mind. I've heard stories from trainers about how horny dolphins are. It's all making sense now. Don't forget about me. <sighs> Lying. This shot indicates that neither of these two moved during the entire night, but people move a ton all night long. Have you never watched someone sleep before? I mean, not that I have. F Oh, How did anyone not know Lucy was going to forget everything in the morning and prepare for it? Wouldn't someone set an alarm to get Henry out of her bed before the following morning? All I know about walruses is that out of all mammals, they have the second largest penis. I have the first. Oh, that's my joke. Yeah, we know. You were so proud of it, you put it in your movie twice. Did you tell Lucy about this trip yet? Well, actually, there's nothing to tell because I decided not to go. A strange response when he has told Lucy before. She wrote about it in her journal, and it was far enough in the past to not be on a recent page. You had plans and a life before you met me, and now all you have time for is a skip. Could I have one last first kiss? Let me guess, instead of him coming back out of the rain, you're going to walk into the rain because kissing in the rain cliche. Have you ever kissed someone in the pouring rain? It's terrible. Rain kissing is the hot tub sex of rom-coms or beach sex or kitchen table sex. Just have sex in your beds, people. This massive trash can fire of a movie has an unmanned massive trash can fire in the movie. Neat. Wait, Lucy just walks off toward the house like she doesn't have a fire to tend to. A fire in a wooden building filled with painting supplies that will surely ignite on contact. Candace, Bernice, and Rose. Polly Waller is shaming. One of the most shocking moments of this movie is that Marlon wraps a CD for Henry. Marlon spent a year re-wrapping a VHS cassette every f***ing night. You know he's tired of wrapping things. Is he trying to tell me something? Wouldn't it be nice if we could wake up? She only sings the day she meets you. She remembers me? Generally, uh, I see when a movie flashes back to obvious things we know, so it makes sure we put the pieces together. But in this case, I need more flashbacks. If Marlon knew she was painting Henry every day, why not just say so instead of playing this coded Beach Boys She's Singing Again game bullshit? Why well, trust Henry to make this diamond head size leap in logic? This is my studio. Also, I can afford a private studio in a mental institute somehow. You know, walking in here every day for the first time is a real f***ing trip too because I realize how talented I am. I could probably sell this art and make enough money to buy the institute altogether, but, you know, baby steps. What would you say if I told you that notebook you read every day used to have a lot of stuff about me in it? I would say that that makes a lot of sense. F***ing what? And f***ing why? There's so little reason or hint given for this selective memory return that this whole happy ending might as well be a day to sex remember you. Here's a fun part of the movie where we are expected to jump forward something like seven years and suddenly accept that Lucy has the ability to wake up on a boat with a remake of her bedroom in the frigid temperatures of Alaskan waters Well, then a really traumatic reaction. Lucy realizes she's in a fake bedroom on a tiny ship and my question is, where does everyone else sleep on this thing? I'm sorry, what the absolute f*** 
are two tiny pink bikes doing on a goddamn boat? Where is the little one going to ride off to? Who's going with her that would also need a tiny bike? Why are the adults okay with wasting precious cargo space on useless bikes? Good morning, Mrs. Roth. Would you like to meet your daughter? Why would I not mention that she has a child in the video before she heads topside? We know it's for the audience surprise, but she should be told why her feet are larger, boobs are lower, and hips are wider. I mean, I know not every woman goes through a lot of physical changes, but at the very least, let her prepare emotionally. Movie contains, at most, 23 first dates. Speaking of diapers, I went to Waffle House last night. So long. And thanks for all the fish. I heard you did a pilot. That was my 15 minutes. What was it? It was a show about a team of female secret agents called Fox Force 5. What? Fox Force 5. Fox is in we're a bunch of foxy chicks. Force is in we're a force to be reckoned with. And 5 is in there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of us. This way you got here? Not here or here so much, but right here. Mm. Mm. Coming, Lucy. Here's Johnny. She lost her short-term memory. Mr. Short-Term Memory, he shouldn't have stood under that pear tree. Hey, Tracy, how you doing? If ever I was to marry someone, it would have been her. I like making little houses out of waffles. I like to say a prayer and drink to world peace. There's nothing like a first kiss. Hold it, hold it. What is this? Are you trying to trick me? Is this a kissing book?